Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro Ruiz. It's kind of red and Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share three printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make projects like this. Inspirational, hopefully. Welcome everybody to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and kick off the show with today's coupon code. It is ASTROPIXEL. So if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, please do so and use the coupon code ASTROPIXEL. There are some lovely freebies going on still. Well, surprise last, of course. Adafruit.com slash free. You get the full list of awesome goodies and tears. Tears of joy. Let's go to same day delivery in New York City. That is an option for the fine folks in the New York City area. So if you are in the New York City area, please check out the website and look at that option for getting your parts that same day that you place the order. Circuit Python. There's a meeting that happens every Monday at 2 p.m. and you can be a part of it. Yes, you. You can join our lovely community of Discordians at the Discord server. There's a link right above the chat up there. It says discord.gg slash Adafruit. Or I bet you could probably use that super cool Google search engine and search for Adafruit Discord and you'll find it. Help wanted. There is lots of help wanted these days. If you have maker skills and you're looking to pay your bills, make a profile at the jobs.adafruit.com. You can see all the different job openings that are there. If you're a maker company and you're looking for exquisite makers, you'll find them there. Exquisite. Yeah, exquisite. Sorry, it's a little early. This week's project. So if you head on over to the learning system, you'll see lots of lovely projects this week. One from ours, Selves Truly's, is the Astrolite NeoPixel Upgrade. This is a toy construction builder kit from 1969. And Phil thought it was a cool idea to revive it and upcycle it with some modern electronics. Yeah, quite a history on uh, this and a bunch of the vintage projects that we restore. This was a really cool one. It was from Hasbro, uh, 1969, like you mentioned. It was before Lightbrite. So Phil's idea was to update it, add a Cricut inside here so we can add uh, motorized functions, which of course it did not have. I thought it did. Yeah, you had to turn the wheel. So there's a wheel here mm -hmm. and you turn that. Um, this grid is basically the light, the light bright grid, but a little bit different. It's like a, a flat it's like a platform, flat, flat so that platform. things are on top. These are the little pieces that come with. Um, there's different uh, tubes. Mm -hmm. These are the main structure pieces, and they are polycarbonate. They are completely clear, and they make some pretty fun light diffusing effects. Yeah. So they're solid, and these are like the little connector tubes that connect these pieces together. Um, so we have a couple 3D printed bits that we can show in the overhead. Yeah, so one of the first things that Phil wanted was the integration of our very lovely uh, clear acrylic case for the uh, Circuit Playground Express designed by Mike Dole to have some sort of way to adapt it so we can add it on there. So what we did was make these little pegs that will go right on the platform. And the way we made these was by using a bunch of our little uh, camera connector bits. So we have the tripod here, uh, the quarter 20 to quarter 20, which is a little bit of an oddball type of screw, has it on both sides, but this is an excellent use if you want to connect two three eighths with uh, VI via the quarter 20. So that connects onto the back of there, which has this very cool slit right there if you want to turn this into an, a wearable. That's also on there too. I added a lot of little compact features into this acrylic case, as well as the uh, built-in buttons, the reset A and B, I have access to those. And then the 3 8 to quarter 20, um, the little three printed uh, peg for this. Very easy to uh, thread that into. It actually prints with the, th uh, the threads on there. Nice little design that we've been utilizing in a bunch of different projects. So definitely check those out. And those have very nice tight tolerances. So it just goes on like that. And you can attach these to any of the uh, small pegs in the platform, or of course, use this on the little, uh, or these, the, like the tubes, the tubes. The tubes. Yes. In addition to that, we also recreated some of the parts. It looks like one of the uh, parts that like to break are the bigger, uh, half sphere type shape. So we just whipped one of those up 
In addition to, of course, adding our logo on there. So we did have some fun making some shapes. We That's have great. the uh, peg compatible uh, parts over on here. So you can add any shape to that. Of course, all of these are uh, Infusion 360. You can grab the sketches for that to build any shape that you want to make this compatible with. You can make like a little ball or something like that. It'd be pretty cool. Add some nice futuristic stuff to that. Taking a look I at some I'd of the- I thought I'd share the little booklet that Astrolite <laughs> comes with just to share um, some of the parts and things that come with this cool builder's kit. Yes. Yeah, so again, this came out in 1969 and discontinued some, somewhere around the mid uh, 1970s. Mm -hmm. But there are still plenty of these uh, accessible on um, eBay and other places like that. Yeah, they're so. about 50 bucks. Um, it's a pretty good condition. I, I was very surprised that all the instructions came with this one. It came assembled. I, I'm assuming it comes, uh, you know, not assembled when you first purchased it. It tells you kind of an idea of like how the place, the base plate is fitted. The base plate is fitted over the yeah. this giant base where the light bulb is. I don't mm -hmm. think it came with the light bulb. You have to get your own. No, lighting. so that's, when we go to the guide, we'll take a look at uh, okay. the modifications we yeah. need to have to do to it. I like this. They have all the parts listed here and then they have a couple of different building um, pre-made kind of kits here. So you can see the little grid layout here. It's sort of an x-ray view of how the pieces are supposed to fit in those little holes. So that's pretty neat. There's the robot. You might have seen this robot um, from our video on YouTube that we post a little demo of it to kind of sneak peek it. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the learn guide. Cool. So here we are at the learn guide. And the, the overview just kind of walks through the project a little bit and what it is. There's a little, nice little gif of showing how all the components are stacked up on top of each other. We have these standoffs that are engaging the color wheel and that are turning it. The servo is mounted on top of the CPX, which is of course mounted on top of the Cricut. So it's a super easy mod. There actually isn't any like um, glue or anything being held that, that's yeah, like holding the press fit friction. Press fit stacks fit. on top, so it's very easy to modify. You don't have to you know, worry about destroying your original no, antique. No, 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 it's the drop in. The only thing I had to destroy was the light bulb in the <laughs> socket oh, that right. I pried off of there. So it was probably bonded to it or something. Yeah. So there's a little. You did a clean job though. Let's take a look at all the parts you need. You really just need the Cricut for Circuit Playground Express. It is in stock right now. So is the Circuit Playground Express that's in stock. And the main thing that made this thing look really good is Hero the this side light NeoPixel strip. This isn't just a regular NeoPixel strip. Actually, it is a regular NeoPixel strip. But the NeoPixel elements themselves are flipped up. So they point light the that way, which is <clears> what you want when your light source is that way. Up, so let's yeah. take a look at the product page. Get a look at the actual pixel elements. You see how they're oriented? So they're 90 degrees <laughs> to the side. To the side. So this makes it very slim if you want to insert it in something. Okay. You need a side lit profile for that. Yeah, these are great. This is where you really need it. So yeah, we did try We did strip. try the regular side uh, lit. <laughs> we did. <laughs> not regular side. It doesn't. Regular lit. Regular New pixel strip. It did standard. not look as good as this. Uh, it's no, super like, bright in here, so you can't even really see the light on it, but uh, take a look at the video. The video. <laughs> yeah. Play with it in the dark. <laughs> yeah, so the side light is really what makes this That is definitely lighting. the hero for this project. Yeah, we got it in different, different, we have them in different configuration sizes. 120 new pixels, that's the most you're going to get from a meter. You could probably go low as 30 a meter. That's like $17 if you want to get something up and going. So check that out. We have the different NeoPixels labeled too. Uh, they're all here accessible in the page. You scroll down here and here's all the different uh, variants and sizes. Okay, let's jump into the circuit diagram. Cricut is awesome because there's kind of no soldering required for most things. Everything uh, connects to the little screw block terminals or if they're using those, um, those female jumper, jumper cables, like our servo here, you can just plug it into the little servo port right on. All right, we're having audio problems going on. Are we, are we doing all right? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay, I got scared. I was like, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> he's deep in thought. Should probably I'm loading up all the here. pages here. <laughs> okay, cool, so this is circuit diagram. Guess what, folks, we use fritzing software. It is open source software. To, create these lovely wired diagrams. If you'd like to make your own, you can do so. We have links 
uh, to the Fritzing diagram and a Fritzing parts library, which includes all the lovely parts like the Circuit Playground Express and Cricut. There's some words uh, for accessibility purposes and search engines and things that like to be crawled. There are um, the connections broken out in words. Yeah, battery powered. It's using the four AA battery pack to power the Cricut. And then we have one of these lovely <clears throat> JST two pin extension cables with a built in on off switch. This makes it really easy to just um, not have to break it open, to turn mm -hmm. off the thing. There's a button outside of the box. And there's a number of different ways to uh, Power it. Do power the, the slide wall. switch, yeah. the, the power. Uh, this is just one of uh, our convenient ways because I wanted to make sure that we could use a JST compatible port with this as well as the barrel jack. So this is why I did this configuration. You can just uh, totally skip the JST connection parts and just solder them straight oh, to right. each other. Good I point. just wanted those connections so I could reuse that uh, battery pack. Mm -hmm. Reuse. And then because I had a little bit of trouble figuring out where the side direction of uh, the NeoPixel strip went, I took a picture of that just for my own reference. You can see which way. If you uh, have it oriented, you can click on the picture to make it bigger. You can see which side mm -hmm. the data will flowed, flow Shh. from in to out. Take a look at it there. It's more size of that. My Number goodness, way. there's too many pixels here. I am. Yeah, that's pretty good. Take a look at that. As reference you can that. see, the text is oriented in that way. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Wouldn't want to plug that in the wrong way. <laughs> all right, let's move into the to the code. This was make all code. Make code. This, this was all put together with make code. There is a special little widget for the Cricut that is um, the, it's an add-on in the Cricut. I mean, in the, uh, the the UI. So just download that little Cricut extension, and then you can start playing around with servos and external NeoPixels. So we have this all broken out for you guys how to set up your circuit playground and your Cricut with make code. Fairly simple, very easy, but we also have broken out if you're very, very new to it. How to upload and test your code for the super best experience. You want to use the USB upload technique, trick, way, method. Yeah, method. That means that you can upload your code from make code on your Google browser straight into the board without having to do this song and dance of, of uh, replacing the UF2 folder on your boot drive. You can just Upload it. Google's like, hey, what's up? USB is like, hey, I'm USB. And then Google Chrome's like, all right, cool, let's do it. Moving on to 3D printing. Did I miss anything from the code? There's a link, so you can just, you don't even have to like code it yourself. You just download it. Open it up, code it up. I wish everybody would do that, actually. Just send us over to the code so you can move around let's those blocks and play around with the way the functions all work together. Future code. Cool. Hit that big pink edit button. Yeah, but this is interactive. I mean, you can start playing with this right here with the as simulator. As soon as you let it load, yeah. Yeah, and see, you look all the buttons, or you can shake it and do whatever. Go to edit. That's going to edit it in uh, the, the editor. Mm -hmm. And then this is all that it's running. We've got a continuous servo that's just running at 5%. We're telling the pixel, hey, you're on pin A1. I want you to be 120, and I want you to be white. So that's how this is working. Cricut extension is super easy to install. It's going to be under the advanced dropdown and then extensions. And woo, there it is, Cricut. There's some other super cool ones which you should take a look at for extra credit. All right, back over to the learn guide. We're going to jump into the 3D printing part. You don't have to 3D print this stuff, but if you've got a 3D printer and you want to really go to town with some you custom fitted stuff, you might want to. I mean, I guess you could 2D print the outlines for this, cut it out of wood, or as we're going to talk about the next project, foam, foam board is very good for making these type of things. Yeah. Both take the same amount of time, one hour to print or one hour to cut. Take your pick. <laughs> One's cheaper. So we got some STLs files that you can download or remix. We also have the Fusion 360 files. These don't have to be in the Fusion 360. You hold on, see. hold on, stop typing. It'll work with Tinkercad, okay? It's gonna oh. work with Tinkercad, it's gonna work with Maya, it's gonna work with whatever CAD thing you use. Rhino or... Rhino, Saurus, all of it works well. You can download multiple different versions of the files for all of these. Yeah. And we have some slice settings as well. Um, slice settings are gonna kind of vary per printer, but this is like the ones we like to use for our Ultimaker and our Prusa i3 MKS. 2S. 2S. Cool. We also have some external CAD files. So if you want to get a nice CAD file of the Cricut board or the Circuit Playground Express, we have a separate GitHub repository free of charge. 
Here it is. It's up here. Uh, new tab. Right click. New tab. It is on GitHub. Give that thing a star. Oh my god, we're at 101 stars. Woo! Thank you so much. I need to look at the branches and pull requests and make sure that they're up to date. But thank you so much for your contributions, folks. Let's move on to the assembly part of this. Ooh, I love Dremels. Sawing things off. I wish I got <laughs> footage of this, but yeah, you do have to, if your light socket does not work, which mine didn't, uh, I had to rip it out. There was a bit of prying that had to go along with that. It just uh, takes too much real estate. You want all that room for your Cricut, and that's where the Cricut sits, where that light bulb is. Yeah, if you don't want to do that, I guess you could just drill, actually, because there are holes already on the inside of that. Question, uh -huh. why didn't you reprint the entire base? <laughs> it's a dumb This question, thing is it? huge. It is massive. It doesn't make any sense to do it's that. It's huge. It's 13 <laughs> feet, or 13 yeah. inches, which is like 1.2 feet. It's yeah, so big. there's ventilation on the bottom because, of course, I'm going to guess that the, hot, the, li <laughs> the lights got super hot. <laughs> it says right here, caution, very warm surfaces. <laughs> it says it all over the box, all it over does. the product. Yeah. There's uh, no warmth with these NeoPixels. It's nice and cool. <laughs> You're gonna catch your house on fire. Yeah, so you could, so you could uh, definitely string the GS, the JST, and um, any wires are gonna poke it out through the ventilation holes there. Cool. But I just removed the whole socket because it didn't work anyway. Yeah, Let me yeah. see what that was like. Yeah. Moving on to assembling the base plate in which the cricket and everything else is gonna be mounted on top of. We're just using four of these standoffs, which have the threads already attached to these. Yeah, they're brass standoffs. You get a kit, or you can. Yeah, get a kit from Amazon. Regular standoffs would work with this. You just have to put the um, oh, you screws through there. Screw. I just thought this was a lot more easier. We had them around. You know, we had a couple of these. You didn't um, even need the nuts because they're threaded. You just thread it through. That's exactly why. The plastic I used will grab onto those threads. Yeah. So that's cool. It's a so great I, way. I have all the holes here for the cricket, but you actually don't need them all. I just used four of them mm. to stabilize the cricket on right on top of those. Yeah. Uh, the sizing for these standoffs, they are the 15 millimeter long ones. So those will give you just enough space so it's not smashing into the top of the platform once you stack all of the components on top. Right. Moving on to assembling the CPX and the Cricut. There is a full guide on that. You are going to get these bolt uh, kit that comes with the Cricut for That's the right. Circuit Playground Express. So you will have access to those. Just add those on top of there. You, I link to how to assemble it, it's super easy, but you're just basically adding the screws and the nuts on the bottom yeah. for the six pins that are connected to the Cricut. Uh, what is it, V out, ground, yeah. uh, A, one. If anybody's doing, it's all there. yeah. The one note I just want to get out of my head is like, this thing is great for you know, a lot of different uh, Circuit Player and Express projects because it gives you all these new mounting points mm -hmm. at the top there. It's not specific to whatever component. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, an, it's like a through adapter. So it's like a thing to thing adapter. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. And then moving on to the three printed mount for the servo. I'm just calling it the servo or the Circuit Playground mount. That's that gray thing. Uh, you're skipping it. It is this little thing right there. I think you can see the arrow for the pointer. And that's going to go on top. That's where the servo, server, servo holder is going to attach to via these smaller 10 millimeter long standoffs. We're stacking it high, guys. Setting those guys up. Yeah. After that, we're going to attach our side light neopixel strip and hook those up to the terminal on the Cricut that is labeled neopixel. Yep. The data for that goes into the arrow part and then the five volt goes red, ground to the black cable. And we actually have to attach the ends of these to the secondary oh, yeah. uh, five volt and ground connection. I'm just using the other terminal that is on the Cricut. I think it was for motor. Yeah, this is why our NeoPixel strips have two wires on both ends um, to give power through both sides so that it can fully power the Blazingly bright, 120 NeoPixels yeah. there. I off of don't this. think you need that many, but it's just the one that we had lying around. <laughs> lying around, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> Nicely packaged and, <laughs> and stored away. All right, so then you just plop the servo on top and it press fits, yeah? Is there you a specific plop the servo, servo holder on top and you're gonna line the cutout yes. to the wire, yes. uh, the cabling for the servo. You wanna line it up to the uh, barrel jack on the Cricut, and that's just so all the wires are, um, when you mount this inside, it's gonna give it space. I have a question. Does it matter how you orient the servo? Oh, it, it has yeah, a cutout. I tell, I tell so you, you one there too. you can only orient it in one way. 
how about the orientation of the actual weight? Oh, the base plate. Yeah, you definitely plate. want to follow that okay, as well. So just keep that same orientation. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's lined up here with the barrel jack. That's yep. an easy note. Okay. Let's keep moving on. Let's talk moving about this. Moving on to the 3D-printed servo horn. These yeah. are spaced out so they, that the standouts that you put on top will go into the little holes that are on the color wheel. Uh, you don't ha again, you don't have to use all four. I'm just using two here, and those uh, simply just slip into the color wheel uh, holes for that. How does the servo horn mount to the shaft of the servo? It press fits, and then you have a hole there to add some of the, the additional screw. screws that these cool. servos usually come with. Yeah, the latest servos that we sell now have a ton of horns There's and a screws, bunch of screws and, and things, horns. which is great because you always go through those. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And the screws are weird. They have like a weird threading. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go ahead and move on to mounting the actual parts uh, to the inside of the base here. So once we have our light bulb gutted and nice and clean, we can start using Again, you it. could pass these through one of the vents on there, but again, using the socket hole there, you just pass through your slide switch or your toggle on and off switch. I'm in awe of the white color of this base, how it hasn't turned into a disgusting color. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So from there, you're just going to plop on the base with everything already stacked on top. You want to position it in the orientation that you see in the photo there, like you were saying, the uh, barrel jack close to where the socket, uh, the light bulb socket was. And then the last thing, oh, I just want to look at it there. Closer look at it. So if you want to make it, just be, just remember to click on the photo. You get a huge on it. picture of it. Yeah, they're ginormous. Yeah, this is really, you can see exactly where it goes. Mm -hmm. Pretty clean, nice and maintained plastic. The last bit of this is having some elevation to the platform because you did raise the uh, servo just a little bit too high. I tried to get uh, standoffs that would, you know, have it perfect, but um, you are going to have to add these 10 millimeter standoffs to the bottom of the platform here. And all that do does is just elevate it. Yeah. This so gives it, it just grind. enough clearance so that right. the, um, the standoffs don't go all the way through the wheel holes. Right. And you can see in the animation there, it just plops right on top. You can hand turn the wheel until you can hear the standoffs going, being inserted into one of the color wheel holes. Really, just turn it on, test it out, start mm. building your future city. And then mm. one side note for the Neo, the uh, Circuit Playground Express case, just a little tripod bits that connect together, the little three part shows the order in which these are connected. Yeah, it's a great standard mounting way, mounting method, mm -hmm. is to use the quarter 20 camera tripod stuff. Okay. Super awesome vintage project that we were able to enjoy, um, bring back with modern electronics. I was able to play with this with Gavin. He had a super fun time just adding all these crazy pieces together. I think his biggest thing was trying to make like the biggest connection that he could yeah. with the little Adafruit Go to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. wanted to go to the moon. One of the, uh, so there's one video on YouTube of a toy reviewer talking about it. It's a, it's a very charming video. Uh, he, he, he actually had it when he was a kid and he was seeing mm -hmm. how growing up watching the Jetsons, all his friends wanted this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was saying it'd be so cool to see it made today with LEDs and modern electronics. I wish somebody would do that. Oh wait, here we go. <laughs> yeah, so one thing that, yeah, I don't want to break it, <laughs> so we'll leave it alone. I just wanted to show what the, the inside of the Oh the yeah, I mean, it's all in the video and then the guide and all you'll that. See it. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to turn it off now. <laughs> it's not loud or anything, it's just... <laughs> it might be loud. Maybe, I don't know. Last week was... Really loud. <laughs> this is cool. So we can They're awesome. You can around. find these on eBay, and of course, this uh, the the selection of components and uh, uh, like the way that this is oriented was the exact same things that we used on that motorized marble run. So any yeah, project in which there's a motor that's on top that's spinning yeah. something, you could this definitely great, yeah. reuse this for those type of projects. Right. So super easy to use, of course, make code, uh, providing the magic for programming this interactively. Definitely check it out in any project that might require any modernization. Cool. Restoration. Excellent. Projects. 
So if you guys want to pick up anything in the shop to build your own Astrolite NeoPixel, use the coupon code ASTROPIXEL. Get 10% off your orders. Sweet. We're jumping into this week's prototyping. What are you prototyping? So continuing our partnership with Microsoft and Cartoon Network, this week's Cartoon Network project is the wand form from Pearl's sword from Steven Universe. That's right. So who is Pearl? Pearl is... This uh, person. This person there. There she if is. If you guys are familiar with Steven Universe, I think we mentioned it last week, we're going to be doing a bunch of Cartoon Network projects, which means cosplay props. Yay, back in it. Doing some phone smithing. So if you head on over to uh, createwithcn.com, you'll see the little lovely landing page. There's all the graphics and all the information you need. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if you go to makecode.adafruit.com, make you'll see the list of all the cool stuff. We have some nice signage of the Cartoon Network characters. And here's a full dedicated list of all the projects that are currently uh, on the Make Code website. And of course, we are working on more that are on the Adafruit Learning System. So this is a little sneak peek, work in progress, of the Light Up Sword. Tell us about the construction and what's got you jazzed about it. So what's crazy about this is I actually go to... The overhead or the under? Over, under. Okay. <laughs> Get in front of the 360 camera there. So the cool thing about this is that this is all constructed with foam and cardboard. No 3D printing. No, no. In this entire project, that's the mind-blowing thing for me. 3D carving. Especially with the name of the show. <laughs> yeah, it's still 3D. Yeah, so, of course, there is a, um, what's it called? Don't oh, break it. No, I'm looking inside of it. Here's the NeoPixel strip. We're using the very easy-to-use alligator clip ver version of the 30 NeoPixel strip version of this. Circuit Playground Express is down here at the palm on the bottom. Can't really see it. I will uh, show this off next week this is, will be e. released on friday let's do this e over here maybe you can see it there there's the pommel that's where the circuit playground lives yeah she's pretty right swank there. nicely hidden there's no wires hanging out it's mm -hmm. nice and clean it's got the color scheme of the character as well we uh shout out to cartoon network for allowing us to just use whatever assets they're just like yeah just whatever use it other companies yeah, are like, yeah. no, no no you can't use you can't use mickey no 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 no, no mm -hmm. mickey ears this they let us go to town they're like well, let down whatever. And they gave us vector graphics we were able to use. Very, very cool. So this is a little graphic of the sword, of Pearl's swirl, sword, weapon, really, because it has mm -hmm. different forms, which I think is pretty interesting. So there's different, different forms of her weapon. Yeah, so originally I did have the longer spear form, but it, for shooting video and all that, I, I didn't want to have to mm -hmm. keep using the wide angle lens so oh, with funny. the wand <laughs> form of that a lot more simpler to use especially for the child since it's supposed to be for the classroom uh you don't yeah. want the kids having such a huge sword that's already gonna it's already gonna be gonna give yeah. the teachers a headache with kids swinging in this thing yeah. so it has interactivity <laughs> it doesn't just light up oh yeah yeah yeah. so when you do the little thing it has, it has an onboard speaker so we get a little sound effect it has an accelerometer so we can detect shakes mm -hmm. and it's it's really simple and easy to set this up you don't have to calibrate the the sensor or anything you just kind of yeah. tell it hey when you turn to the left run some of these pixels mm -hmm. very neat Cool. So the learning guide is in progress mm -hmm. um, as we're documenting the construction of it. Here are some other lovely pieces and things. Um, so, the, so the way that we made this work with, was with a Cricut. You could, of course, cut this out by hand, but I just wanted to make sure that the precision was pretty good on that. Started off with cutting out an outline of the shape of the sword. Uh, they did give us all those that we this needed. This is pretty big. I didn't know the Cricut could do this big. The Cricut could do, I think it's... Crap, I forgot. The Cricut is a inches? vinyl cutter. I'm sorry, we're going to yes, recall yes, it. We're yes. going to name it Cry Cut. The yes. Cry Cutting Machine mm -hmm. can do about um, a foot. So like 12 inches or 310 millimeters. It's pretty big. It's, it's pretty big. as big as this. It's yeah, yeah. pretty big. So this is dollar store bought um, materials. This is the foam board that you Great can find, like you said, anywhere, like even at the dollar store, yeah. uh, department stores, like even at the groceries and the... Uh, aisle that has all of the school supplies. Pro tip, you know you have a, a legit cosplayer when they're making sure and looking at all of the pieces of foam, making sure none of them are warped. <laughs> That's like a pro. Okay, so you're going to draw this onto the foam core and then uh, print it out a piece for the 
um, the texture. Part this is super apart. smart, okay? Because you're using this. This is thin. If you were to try to cut this on the Krika, good luck. That's it's gonna too take thick, forever, yeah. and it might not even work if you don't yeah. have like a deep knife blade. Mm -hmm. So uh, using the, the the vinyl cutter to create these kind of templates is really like the the method to go with. Yeah. Get these super clean edges, and then you cut it out yourself as mm -hmm. a template. The other technique that I used in here was when I cut out the the um, the outline for this, which is going to be the siding for it. I used the center of it to actually act as the backing and the front. The part that you saw where I uh, just yeah. uh, take this out, where it just uh, slips right in. So this is three so layers like a lid. thick. There's three layers stacked on top of each other. You fourth can, layer fourth covers layer? it up. Right. So this is great construction here. Mm -hmm. You um, could go in and actually add like depth to it or like cut the, mm, the contour, the bevels, yes. yeah, by hand, but I just didn't have time for that. Yeah. A little bit more skill required for that. Yeah, but with the light being on, it looks really good. Yeah, this is just marker. You feel that? <laughs> you can probably tell. It's just yeah, marker. you could probably print that on there, but mm -hmm. because I was doing the cutting and the drawing at the same time on the Cricut, it just made more sense for me to yeah. just do it all in one instead of having the Cricut try to scan where to cut. It doesn't always line up as, as good. So I just had the Cricut do the drawing and then I just went in and did the coloring fill that in myself. The construction of the handle is all with uh, cardboard. So a regular like a uh, hand towel, paper towel tube mm -hmm. should work on that. But I created my own with just chipboard, you know, like the oh, point, just wrap it or 0. 0.7 millimeter thick uh, chipboard. Yeah, just okay, glued it together. I have, here it is. A bit it's of like chipboard? This. Yeah. There you go. So it looks just like a toilet paper roll. I mean, that's what the stuff's made out of. Mm -hmm. Or you could find some, repurpose some from your notebook backing yeah, or yeah, yeah. the cereal box. Cereal mm -hmm. boxes here in the States use this material called chipboard. Might be called something else, but. Yeah, so what all I did was wrap it around the, um, the battery yeah. pack and made it di the same diameter as that. Yep. Used some clamps to hold these down while I just glued it. Uh, you could do that with uh, the paper tubes again. Uh, you are you might have to double up on them because they are pretty thin, um, but the diameter True. of it should work with that battery pack. Yeah. And then the Circular Express uh, with the, um, the alligator clips simply press fits onto the rest of the handle. The pommel is being held in place by just friction as well yeah. with the Circuit Playground. It, it all sinks in. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the construction of all of the little bits, like the gem that's on the bottom here on the pummel, uh, all constructed with just these cutouts. You can see I just drew these out. Um, where are these? They just uh, fit little together templates. like that. Yeah, just these little templates. All of these files, of course, are included in the downloads. They're all just SVGs that you can cut or print out. And that's how we're creating these cool little, <laughs> uh, little inserts for that. It's also you add acting as a stopper for the Sega Playground Express. Kind of see it there. And then if I take this out, I can show you what it actually looks like. Here is the Circuit Playground Express, all the way at the bottom here. Look at those alligator clips. No soldering required, folks. Yes, I have to mention that Super again. Quick, there is, is this is designed for the classroom, so there is no soldering in any of these uh, in these uh, Cartoon Network projects. Correct. So you do have to use the, the small alligator clips to act as an extension, so you can get down to the rest of uh, the LED strip uh, over by the blade. So I think it's about that big is how much more of a uh, wire you needed. So you could just easily use the alligator clips and just clip them to each other to act as extension cords. Uh, the other wires would have been just too long and it starts getting all, you know, too much wire in there once you start mm -hmm. adding all those. So this just press fits in there like that. And it's, uh, it does a really good hold. <laughs> I'll show, I don't think I offloaded the video of me just swinging this thing around. What are you hiding in there, Cheetos? Like, <laughs> <laughs> in a battle mode. Uh, the way that this is constructed too, it's just paper. I, again, give the templates, so you can cut these out. So it'll make the perfect little flange here yeah. on the outside of that. And then like I was saying before, this little construction thing, it's just foam core that uh, all pushes it's into place. It's not even hot glued in place. It's yeah, it's not even hot glued. That's great. Yeah, so Completely all of these can be de deconstructed. And this uh, hopefully gives you an, uh, inspires you to you know, make some really complicated yes. um, 
props out of just foam board. Yeah. I think this is great to get a bunch of kids working on one together, maybe? Because mm -hmm. then different kids can kind of gravitate towards what they like. Let's yeah. say somebody in the team likes crafting more. The other kid loves problem solving in math, so maybe they're doing the code. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Just an example. Remember, remember getting like a shopping list for arts class? You needed art supplies? Can you oh, imagine yeah, yeah. one day it'll say Adafruit Circular Express? <laughs> We're working our way to that. <laughs> if you're an educator, please make that happen. <laughs> we really appreciate that. Uh, moving on over to the code. Yeah, this is all uh, uh, programmed all in. All make code. Make code. So Microsoft super easy. Make code. I think I have the link to the, to you the do. code it's there. You do. It's in so our you description. Can see it it's there. in the link of the description of this video that you can click on. There it is. Make code. It's got a swinky URL. There you go. Pearl Sword. Pearl Sword. Super easy. Thanks. There we go. There's the link. Edit. It's a nice little... Is this the latest? I think it's the latest, yeah. Okay, so cool. all it's doing is when you tilt it to the right, which is where the blade is positioned, it'll activate this little sparkly animation on the strip and on the CPX itself. It'll then play a little sound, magic wand sound. Yeah, let's say you wanted to do something different. So you go under the input box, and here's all the different things you can do. Maybe it only lights up when it's dark outside. Mm -hmm. or maybe it only flashes when it hears a clap. These are all the kind of things you can do with this, and as you roll over every little block, it kind of gives you an idea of what it does. There's lots of different uh, project examples as well that you can dive into and get an idea of how it was put together, but mm -hmm. that's kind of how it is. Okay, cool. No cricket needed for this one. It's all Circuit Playground. Yeah. Super short. So this will be launching on Fridays as well as start releasing all the Cartoon Network projects. I think next week I'm going to do the shield, Rose's Excellent. shield. I'm going to do the uh, uh, Anthemus whip, the LED whip. <laughs> you want to do all the more. weapons? So, uh, yeah, all, all, the, all the fun weapons. All the fun. Cool. Again, this was Pearl from Steven's Universe. Mm -hmm. Cartoon Network. Yay. Excellent. It is 11.32. We still have a little bit of time. Still Don't better. forget, Circuit Playground Express is in stock, so you can get 10% off that if you use coupon code ASTROPIXEL. Taking a look at the room. comments real quick. Yeah. I feel like I've been talking for a long stop. No. Let's see. You don't have the budget for a cricket. Well, they're like 180 bucks. Like $100, bucks, so. yeah. Yeah, like 100 bucks yeah. at uh, Michael's. There's always coupons. You can get the Start Cameo. Oh, I saw Cameo. They are started to make pink uh, final cutters now. Pink final Looks cutters? pretty cool. That's awesome. I should get one. And it still is friendly with other software. Uh, there's just SVGs. I think everything works with SVGs. Yep, SVGs. All these are all produced in like. It's like the Illustrator. Like the, oh, your fusion file, like, dude, it's a step file. It's like it's saying it's just, an SVG file. I know, they're just bits. Everything works Bro, with it's everything. It's just XML, okay? <laughs> it's open. Anyways, hello everybody in the chat room. Thanks so much. We're gonna jump into the next prototype and what am I working on? We got some really cool fun. projects. You hold it up and I'm gonna adjust the aperture. Hold it up closer, please. Check it out, it's an old fashioned Macintosh. Yeah, hold it up closer, please. There we go. Now I'm gonna do a exposure change live. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Let me do the, the focus. You guys ready to focus? Right. Keep it still right there, I think is pretty good. What do you think? That's pretty good. Yeah, so this is the Halloween M0 Express inside of a little 3D printed Mac SE30 type of project. So the Halloween M0 Express, super awesome tricked out feather, okay? It's got 128 by 128 display, that's what you're seeing there. It can run Circuit Python. It's got eight megabytes of SPI flash. That means it can do this. Do I sound like Steve Jobs yet? <laughs> Look at that. It's now a Mac Apple II GS. Oh. Just like all Macs, it crashed. Let's do another one. <laughs> this is Mac OS 9, one of my favorites. That's how I grew up. Actually, no, I grew up with Mac OS 8. That's right, sorry, I'm a little No, we there. actually grew up with 7.5.2. You grew up with 7, I didn't give a crap until <laughs> <those> 8. <laughs> All right, and this is uh, the Apple III SOS, uh, November 2, 1982. Copyright 1980. I don't know what that is, I'm too, too young. And this is kind of your classic uh, System 3, is what they called it. And now we're getting into the, the OS 10 days. This is the Panther, oh, I believe. Aqua. 
And this is Aqua, the first OS X splash screen. So by now, if you haven't figured it out, oh, and there's the original, I'll leave it there. That is the startup sounds, the chimes that are infamous with all Apple computers. Mm -hmm. They all had different cha chimes. So uh, this project uh, kind of pays a tribute to that. It's completely hollow on the inside. You can see it's all snap fits. I got this cool little, this little door and here's the speaker. So it press fits into there and uh, you can access it there. I was actually using the, the cap touch things right there to activate and change um, the sounds. This is, this is actually an, uh, a project that's already up on the Adafruit Learning System. It is John Park's Tiny Museum Project. All I did was I basically created my own assets, reused the exact same code, dropped in my files, and I was having fun. So this is a really simple and, and clean project. Um, I'm sure uh, folks could adapt it, remix it to do whatever type of fun, different things it can do. But it really does look like it's like loading up. OS ten. Every time I walk by your desk, I do think yeah. that. Or when I hear the restart I sound, I'm always it's, like, oh no, we'll so crashed. <laughs> no, it's more of a worry than it is, yeah, it a, is an annoyment. It's, it's like, oh no. It's like a, pra a practical joke. It's just like joke. <laughs> it's like hearing Can I just a play wounded with this for the rest puppy. Alright, <laughs> that's it. That's what we're working on. Get it away from me. <laughs> Too. Very sweet. nostalgic. It was just a lot of fun looking at all the different documentations, oh, yeah. all the different images. Oh yeah, big deal. You have a oh. print in place. <laughs> I, <forgot. laughs> I spent I spent like a day designing this, this thing. This thing is man. freaking awesome. It's going to be added to the widgets library in our CAD file, so yes. everybody can use these. Download file. Super useful here whenever you need a nice little Let's run through latch. It. So I set up the latch. In hold on, hold on. Start over since we're going to rip this out for. Yes, you're right. Go. All right, so here's a 3D printed, print in place, ha uh, hatch, latch. <laughs> Start over. Yeah. Actually put the title up first. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do layer by layer, layer, layer Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer. In today's tour, we're gonna take a look at a print in place, 3D printed hinge. So the hinge in CAD is set up as components so that we can kind of simulate how the hinge works. So you can get an idea of how many degrees of angle you can adjust the thing. Uh, since this is a print in place, that means all of the hinge, the door and the frame is all printed at the same time, flat on the bed. So to do that, the main issue that you're gonna run into with 3D printing is tolerances. If the tolerances are too little, meaning the space between faces that intersect, then you're going to have some fusing. That means you're going to print this out and you can't open it because the layers are too tight together. So really cool thing is to set up user parameters. If you're a programmer, you probably know what a variable is. It's basically a variable. You give it a name. Let's say it's the pin height and then you give it a value, meaning a number. Is it one millimeter, two millimeters? I use that to create a, uh, a variable called gap, which I use to give me a little bit of clearance between the edges. So since I have that set up, why not set up other aspects of the hinge? Let's say the width, the pin diameter, and the pole diameter. Um, so by, able, by being able to set up their, your uh, parameters so that they're applicable in the extrusions and different features, you can make this parametric model that scales and the features kind of flow with it. Very, very cool uh, technique. This is a free download um, that you can Get the link in the description of this video. And uh, there are some little things that you wanna look out for whenever you're using parametric values, uh, user parameters. You wanna really inspect your design as you're changing values. Some features might break. For example, here, I can just add another one called the framing of the door, and that'll give me a little bit more padding so that the whole uh, widget can be printed. So that's the hinge. Uh, we'll take a look at it in the overhead. Um, you could be repurposed on a different machine. Let's say I wanted to print this with a 0.8 nozzle or a one millimeter nozzle. I could go into Fusion and just update all the numbers, make everything double the size and get a, uh, something that would work with a bigger tool head. So here's a close up look of the parts. This was printed in Filamentum's Black Galaxy PLA filament. And it, it prints in place. So that means this whole area here, the nice shiny bottom, that's the very first layer that it prints. And you can see that there's 
just a tiny little bit of gap in between the, the, the door and the door framing. Another little bit is this little clip here that kind of that keeps the thing from just falling out. So if you wanted to make something like a case that had a battery door and you wanted to be able to get the battery out, you can use your thumb, click that open, and then you can access your thing. Remember, this is parametric, so it's not gonna stay this size. This is, this is just a little test print, so. Is that the smallest you can get it? You know what, that was the goal. It was like, how small can I get this thing? So I started with very little values. Wow. I bet if I were to exclusively use the 0.2 nozzle, I bet mm. I could make this like a, like a M3 size, because right now it's M6, which mm. is metric. So it's a six millimeter diameter pole. <laughs> I bet I can do half that, because I mean, that just makes sense. Half of 0.4 is 0.2, isn't it? <laughs> so there you go, that's my hinge. Um, there are lots of hinges on Thingiverse. Ain't nothing special about it. <laughs> it's, not like it's parametric. That's cool. It's pretty cool. Also, it's when I was doing CSS uh, as a web developer, one I had a thought. You know, it'd be cool if we could, because as you make uh, adaptive designs, you would you would make some CSS that would like mm -hmm. kind of f your layout would basically flow, flow with, with the browser window. And I feel like that's kind of like what the thought was. Like maybe one day in the future we'll be able to apply this adaptive design to real world things. And yet wow. here we are doing it Yay. with a little door hinge. Super awesome. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Coupon codes, AstroPixel. I'll have to save the link. This thing is too fun. Now. I can't even look yeah, at it. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It. Get this thing out of here. Uh, this thing is too cool. Put it face down. AstroPixel. Get your coupon. That was this week's Layer by Layer. Remember, you can get all of the 360 Infusion parts that are compatible with all of your favorite CAD Take a look programs. At this, one. this is PID, I don't know. It's the Pi Bonnet to the LoRa Radio and OLED Bonnet for the Raspberry Pi. That's so this is the latest uh, and greatest uh, LoRa Radio module. It has a lot of different flavors and packages, but this one's for the Raspberry Pi. It's got that OLED on it and three buttons. This was last week's um, Hero featured product. So we made a CAD thing for it. So if anybody wants to use it in a project and they need a drawing of it, here it is. It's got a nice header on it. It is still, it, wait, did I say it's still in stock? Because I meant it's not in stock, sorry. Yeah, let me check, check that out. Sign up for the notification so we know that people want more, so we can make more. Do you know that? That's how we know. So please uh, put your email in there. We won't spam you, I swear. You can swear. Anyway, CAD parts, they're there on the GitHub. There's a link in the description of this video in every single video that we do. Where's the, I don't have it open. Yeah, I don't have it open. Oh, there's a Halloween. It's in stock. That's good. Yay. 97 of them in stock. Let's get that number to zero. Come on, folks. Coupon code, AstroPixel. <laughs> Hey, long time no see, Toaster. Welcome back to the show. Let's keep on moving. Chop Talk. Or is it Community Makes? I think it's Community Makes. All right, Community Makes. Time Lapse Tuesday happens every Tuesday. This is a mug. This week, this is a super cool little mug. Yeah. We'll, we'll look at the Thingiverse page after because he did a phenomenal paint job. Is that paint? Or is it I think he did paint it, yeah. Okay, so it's painted. Some people paint so good that I'm like, that's multi material. Oh, and it's right. like just painted. <laughs> this is printed on the Prusa 3D printer. Standard settings on this guy. It took about 14 hours just because of the time lapse. All of that time it takes for the move. The camera had to move away. Yeah. And this fits your standard soda can. So a nice little insulator here. Yeah. Good little print to go along with Keeps the Viking type over. of themes. Yeah, your D&D your &D game. Oh yeah, this out, it's like, supposed to be either a can holder or a dice mug. So yeah, yeah, it definitely works as that. This thing's awesome. It's nice such size a nice for that. Detail. I didn't do any scaling on this, so this is the size that he uploaded it at. And he did an excellent job in terms of the wood grain and all that. Yeah, this is awesome. Cool you little rivets knot. and stuff. Oh gosh. The, uh, the holder here. A nice little spacing for your fingers. <laughs> um, really good job. Even the bottom here has this little holder for your can, so it's not sliding back and forth. That is super dope. cool. Super flat bottom, so you get really great layer adhesion, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Let's take a look at Thingiverse page. This is on Thingiverse. Huge shout, shout out to Aris 
uh, Morandi 3D Thingiverse user uh, for uploading that. This is a little photo of it. Calls it a can holder dice mug. Makes sense because it looks like something you would see in D&D. Oh, look, he shared our video. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it with us. Look at this. Oh, this is just super dope show. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Here it is in white. I guess he printed it in white. Probably a good idea if you're going to paint it. Yeah. Print it in white. And then paint it. It looks really dope. Excellent work. We got one make. I think that's us. Oh, you can buy him a coffee too. Buy him a coffee. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, sir, for sharing that with us. Next up, we have an enclosure remix for the Adafruit Feather. This was by jo, uh, Joe, Joe Tabo. This is a particle mesh for the particle uh, mesh. All the particle argons and borons and xenons and those are actually real names, by the way. I just sounded like I was making up stuff. But this is the, the remix of the feather box that we did a couple, a couple minutes ago. All the screws are here listed out. Awesome stuff. Looks pretty good. Printed in different colors. And that's really what it was meant for to remix. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That is all the community makes that we have this week. If you'd like to share any of your projects with us, why don't you do it on show and tell? Where's show and tell? We're done with the show, right? Yeah. yeah. Every week we show up 7.30 ET. Show off all the projects that we're going on uh, with the community. Everybody likes to hang out. Tomorrow and film. We're hanging. Hanging out. There they are, they're hanging on top of the roof. It's like, what's up? We're we doing it. <laughs> and then right after that is Ask an Engineer. That's right. Tomorrow Phil. Full hour. Full hour. Checking out all of the things going on in the maker world. Cool projects that were coming up and new products are being worked on and released. So Did definitely it. check that out. And then tomorrow, don't forget, John Parks Workshop. He's also going to be working on some Cartoon Network projects. I don't want to spoil what he's working on. It'll blow your mind. Did I give it away? <laughs> I think so. Nah. So it's super cool. Definitely check in for that. He does have uh, coupon codes as well. So we check in, hang out with John Park every week, Thursdays, 4 p.m. Not AT. It's PT, right? <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. That's correct. Yeah. Sorry. Eastern time. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, he's living in the PT, but yeah, he yeah. operates in the right. PT. <laughs> I think we're done, folks. We'll see you tonight. Thank you so much. I'm too grateful. I don't know. I have words. <laughs> I'm going to melt right here in front of you. Bye. <laughs> see you next week, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Or tonight. See you tonight. I hope to see you <laughs> again. See you guys. Peace. Don't forget to make a great day.